So here's how I've learned how to deal with my fear. I made a decision a long time ago that if I want creativity in my life, and I do, then I will have to make some space for fear too. Plenty of space. I decided that I would need to build an expansive enough interior life that my fear and my creativity could peacefully coexist since it appeared that they would always be together. And so we fail to chase our dreams, we fail to chase our purpose in life because we're just stuck for that one thing and not looking at life in a bigger picture. Um, and so we, you know, we continue to be complacent. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you're joining us from and welcome to Authentic by Magoma, another episode of Boldly and Intentionally. And on today's episode, I obviously have my mother, who was there <laughs> in the last episode. She's going to introduce herself with her government names fully, um, but I call her mom. She's called Lynette. Am I allowed to call you Lynette? No, you're not allowed. Okay, mom. <laughs> 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 and <laughs> the quote for this video is basically asking ourselves, does the presence of courage mean the absence of Fear. So courage to either go after our dreams, chase our goals, or attract them. Does that mean that fear is not present? Welcome again. Thank you for having me again. Uh, it's a delight to be able to sit here with you. It's an honor. Obviously, I'm also to be sitting with you uh, to have conversations about life yeah. and how we can make ourselves better in life. So to reintroduce myself again as Mama Nyanchama, Mama Ajuogi, because I know he'll be watching and he'll want to be recognized, so I recognize you, my son. Um, my name is Alinette Magoma, Omwange, Ouma. Please make sure that you add that. The Ouma. <laughs> um, so that you can complete. So I also have four names like you. I acquired one name by marriage and gift. Oh, uh, and grateful about it. <laughs> um, yeah, I do not think and I don't believe that um, the absence of fear means that you have courage. Yeah. So for everything that we desire to do when we wake up in the morning and you get on the road and you're moving somewhere, there's some level of fear. But at the end of the day, you have to face your fears. Are we actually born fearful? No, children are not born fearful. Um, and this is something that I have learned in the journey of life, that children are born with a lot of courage. They are fearless. A young child is fearless. They express themselves, again, in the reference of books, as Louis Hay says, they are so innocent, they are so fearless, and that's the reason why you will place a child here, and they will pee. Yeah. you know so because they don't care about anything around them they just it's just about them in life but the moment you start to tell them what did you do stop it then you're starting to create some form of fear yeah. now is that fear good or is it bad fear can be used as a form of discipline but then you have to make sure that in that process of disciplining children that you do not cause fear that makes them not want to explore anything because then otherwise you would want to explore everything you would go to that tv as a child and you want to climb on it you're fearless that's true but then isn't it damaging so finding the balance between being courageous to do the right things and especially now for the children being guided by their parents when you're very young to be able to move to the next level to grow but also not to instill so much fear that then you actually become timid and you can't even make a move. Yeah. So that to me is what how I look at it in terms of um, you know positive fear and negative fear that is instilled in children. Now there are those innate fears, especially when looking at what this series seeks to do in transforming people's mm -hmm. lives, um, in ensuring that we are able to find our purpose, live in our purpose, because we were we all came here on yes. this earth yes. for a reason. But we're very scared to take a step forward yes. towards the right direction or whenever we do we have some self-sabotaging behaviors yes. that bring us back to unsustainable habits yes so can are those deeply rooted in our adulting process in terms of parenting or are those things we learn where do you pick that fear from 
I think it's both. There are fears that you pick from where you learn in school. Um, there's that teacher who told you, you teacher of math. <laughs> <laughs> you can <laughs> never <laughs> hack this. Mali <laughs> math, you can never hack this. You know, and that already created fear. And so you have, you probably have fear of maths. I don't yeah. think I had the fear of maths. I had the fear of physics. Mali <laughs> more physics. Um, and then there is the fear that your parents, definitely, or your environment, the people, your caregivers will transfer to you. Yeah. So that is that creates self-sabotage um, in us. We are not able to progress in life because everything you want to encounter, there's always doubt. You know, there's the fear of failing. You don't want to fail. Perhaps we've been raised to be perfectionists, you know. Yeah. Everything you do, you want to do it in a perfect manner. But I do not think there's anybody in this world who can stand up and say, I woke up one day and I did this and I was perfect on it. There has to be some level of practice. And that's where, to me, then the cohabiting of fear and your courage comes in, in making yourself uh, grow, in not being your own saboteur, being able to grow and progress in life. So we all have a responsibility as we get to know ourselves to be able to know to, to, to be able to address the fears that we have um, on a daily basis. And I, you know, it's as we said, it's continuously being able to cohabit with the fears. What is courage and creativity? Because for you to be courageous, majority of the times you're stepping into a realm of some level of creativity because mm -hmm. you're being courageous mm -hmm. to do something or get into something that you've never done before mm -hmm. and that is a form of creativity courage from my end means the ability to face your fears it's the confidence that you have to be able to go and face that thing that makes you fearful but also you know when you have a dream and we say that if you're dreaming about something then if it doesn't make you fearful it's not good enough yeah or it's too small oh it's too small so that's how i look at it in terms of courage you have to cohabit work with your fears while knowing this is what i'm going for i will go for it no matter what and again there's always the side shows you know so that fear is going to keep diverting you in order to stop you from attaining your goals, in order to stop you from achieving your dreams. Mm -hmm. But then you, once you have the courage and know that I will face it either way, mm -hmm. then you will not be able to stop pursuing what you want to pursue. You will not stop chasing your purpose. Yeah, absolutely agree with that. Now, so that we don't look like we are rambling about things we assume there is evidence of. <laughs> The information mm -hmm. that we are giving you. Mm -hmm. So this book, uh, by the way, this is not a paid ad, but if you're an author and you'd like us to discuss, if you have a good book with great information and you'd like us to reference uh, your information, send over the books and reach out to us uh, in the description box. My email is magomachristiana at gmail.com. Uh, this is not a paid ad, but the author is called Elizabeth Gilbert yeah. and the book is called Big Magic, Creative Living Beyond Fear. Hey, so uh, this part is called the road trip and it says so it's basically we're just gonna do two pages so here's how I've learned how to deal with my fear I made a decision a long time ago that if I want creativity in my life and I do then I will have to make some space for fear too plenty of space I decided that I would need to build an expansive enough interior life that my fear and my creativity could peacefully coexist since it appeared that they would always be together. In fact, it seems to me that my fear and my creativity are basically conjoined twins, as evidenced by the fact that creativity cannot take a single step forward without fear marching right alongside it. Fear and creativity shared a womb. They were born at the same time and they still share some vital organs. This is why we have to be careful of how we handle our fear. Because I've noticed that when people try to kill off their fear, they often end up murdering their creativity in the process. So I don't try to kill off my fear. I don't go to war against it. Instead, I make all that space for it. Heaps of space. Every single day. I'm making space for fear right this moment. I allow my fear to live and breathe and stretch out its legs comfortably. It seems to me that the less I fight my fear, 
the less it fights back. If I can relax, he relaxes too. In fact, I cordially invite fear to come along with me everywhere I go. I even have a welcoming speech prepared for fear, which I deliver right before embarking upon any new project or big adventure. And it goes like this. You can read the speech. Sure. Dearest fear, creativity and I are about to go on a road trip together. I understand that you'll be joining us because you always do. I acknowledge that you believe you have an important job to do in my life and that you take your job seriously. Apparently, your job is to induce complete panic whenever I'm about to do anything interesting. Interesting. And may I say to you that you are superb of your job. So by all means, keep doing your job if you feel you must, but I will also be doing my job and on this road trip, which is to work hard and stay focused and creativity will be doing its job, which is to remain stimulating and inspiring. There's plenty of room in this vehicle for us. Come along. So make yourself at home, but I'm understanding this. Creativity and I are the only ones who will be making any decisions along the way. I recognize and respect that you are a part of this family, so I will never exclude you from our activities. But still, your suggestion will never be followed. Stay off. <laughs> you are allowed to have a seat and you are allowed to have a voice, but you are not allowed to have a vote. You are not allowed to touch the roadmaps you're not allowed to suggest detours. You are not allowed to fiddle with the temperatures. Dude, you're not even allowed to touch the radio. But above all else, my dear old familiar friend, you're absolutely forbidden to drive. Is that good enough? Very, very well done. Thank you. And it continues just to conclude. Then we head off together, me and creativity, and fear side by side forever advancing once more into the terrifying but marvelous terrain of a known outcome so she asks why it's worth it or rather is this really worth it it isn't always comfortable or easy carrying your fear around with you on your great and ambitious uh, road trip i mean but it's always worth it because if you can't learn to travel comfortably alongside your fear then you'll never be able to go anywhere interesting or do anything interesting. And that would be a pity because your life is short. Our lives are short and rare and amazing and miraculous. And you want to do really interesting things and make really interesting things while you're still here. I know that that's what you want for yourself because it's all I want, because that's what I want for myself too. It's what we all want. And you have treasures hidden within you, extraordinary treasures. And so do I, and so does everyone around us. And bringing those treasures to light takes work and faith and focus and courage and hours of devotion. And the clock is ticking and the world is spinning and we simply don't have time anymore to think so small. We are done, congratulations. She is amazing. My coffee quack here, Elizabeth Douglas. It's so powerful. I like every sentence in this readout. Yeah. I think also even acknowledging, you know, the closing remarks that life is truly short. Yeah. And therefore, what shall we be called out to? It reminds me of the podcast you had with uh, Nekesa. Yeah. And I know she was talking about this South African musician who passed on and she was 36 years old. Yeah. But yet she left like a huge legacy. Yeah. And then she was talking about Keta Kress at the same time and she was like, you know, it's just the Keta, beginning. It's just the beginning. And I think that, as we you, you say, you know, we all do not know truly when we shall depart from this world. Yeah. Um, and our time to do things is now. Our, our time to have impact is really now. So if we have to live in fear, if we continue to live in fear and not face what we have to do, not, not be able to live our purpose, it will be very unfortunate because every one of us truly has a gift that God has given us. And so if we can't pick up and cohabit with the fear, 
walk along the fear, not allow the fear to have a voice, not allow the fear to even turn on the radio, we will truly not be able to live our purpose. And because we don't know, someone can live a hundred years, but they, are, they have no impact. Yeah. Someone will live 20 years and within those 20 years, they have done so much. So we are all called upon to really, you know, face our fears and be able to live a life. So guys, if you hear any background noise, my apologies. Uh, support this platform sh by sharing this video so that we have more people and we can purchase like proper studio equipment and you will not be hearing any background noise. But there's still great value in the conversations that we have, especially for young people and old people too. Mm -hmm. Old are uh, not old, older people. Um, just so that we can be able to coexist with courage, fear, and purpose. And meanwhile, while I was reading this award is cute because I'm a little bit afraid to pronounce it. It's inadvertently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, I did it. I did it, guys. <laughs> I'm courageous. Yes. <laughs> but I mean, the fact that I skipped it, but, but I still went on to read the other parts, it just shows how probably in this very moment I am coexisting with fear and courage because I don't like to shrub. Is shrub an English word? <laughs> They will understand. They will understand. If I have understood, Umo. they will also understand. <laughs> <Umo. laughs> yeah. Um, but my favorite part about this um, passage or this part in the book, Big Magic, is the tool she talks about that you need to live in your purpose and to go out for your dreams boldly and intentionally being the video series. Um, so those tools, she says, um, and bring those treasures to light. Uh, and to bring those treasures to light takes work. So there's work, there's faith, and focus, and courage, and hours of devotion. Yeah. So those five tools cannot be ignored. You can't just wake up and suddenly you let go of a past habit and you put built something over different. time. Yeah. 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 So there's the devotion and work that you must actually put in, whether it's transforming your mind, whether it's transforming your body, whether it's transforming or building a better relationship in your spiritual life. The things, the tools that you need, the focus, the work, the energy that goes into it that are so, so important. In the book, she goes ahead to talk a little bit more about that. So th we have just touched Juju. Mm -hmm. This particular episode was to decipher whether um, courage and fear can coexist yep. or they can only exist alone. What I think maybe is it's possible to have fear and lack courage, but it's impossible to have courage and lack like fear. fear. Yes, that's true. Like yeah. if you want to be courageous, you must have make fear. room for both. Yes, yeah. there has to be fear. Yeah, because fear is that thing holding you back. Because you're trying something new. I mean, yes, completely new that you've never done, or even relearning a new habit. For some of us, probably let go of something we used to be very passionate about, and then we're learning it again. So it's trying to pull you back. But it's very possible just be fearful and never progress. go out and never yeah. progress, yeah. as you're saying. Your fear will just keep you there. Your fear will keep you stuck. Um, you will not be able to start a new project. You will mm -hmm. not be able to unlearn those habits that you know are no longer serving you. So you will want to be stuck to it because you're fearful. At times, people have fear because of comfort. That's what I find. And so you found yourself, you probably have a job. And you're earning a salary and you know i think again in reference to seeing like my parents the generations of having a government job and knowing i am permanent i am pensionable and so i will not leave this job because i know that at the end of the day i will not i will have a pension yeah. and you know so that pension basically keeps you there but the fear you have is the day i will not have a job what will my life look like and so we fail to chase our dreams, we fail to chase our purpose in life because we just pack for that one thing and not looking at life in a bigger picture. Um, and so we, you know, we continue to be complacent, you know, at times we end up being complacent because we just don't want to um, be able to learn new things, you know, because I do believe that even in facing the courage, in having the courage and facing our fears, we are basically moving to the next level and that means we are learning new things we are starting new projects um we are starting a business you know mm -hmm. so if you can't leave your current job that is probably just keeping you there and every day you wake up in the morning you're trying to stretch 
and get out of bed and get to the job and then act smiley um it's really not serving you but you have to know the right time it doesn't mean that you have to continuously quit yeah. but it does mean that when you know that your purpose for that particular season. activity season is over then you have to move to the next one yeah. so that's 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 what i would say in terms of you know the fear at times for people who feel they're so much stuck in something um and you don't want to have to face it of course you have to ask yourself the right questions um you can't be jumping from here to the next point without consulting yeah. internally without going through a process uh, but then do not allow yourself to be stuck in something. The world has so much to offer. Everywhere you go, there's so much. And there's, everywhere you go, there's something for you and me. We yeah, cannot complain. You know, that's also the other thing that we've been raised to think that I am only fit in this small pot. Yeah. And we are not looking at the bigger pot, you know. So we will never fill this world. You know, we will never finish whatever God has for us. So it's okay to be able to want to learn new things yeah. and then let go of the old habits. Absolutely, I love it, and I, I can't anything. I can't. Oh, Jesus, I can't add anything <laughs> to that. It's well put. I totally agree, and I'm grateful that these are the conversations that we have on and off camera. Yeah, because they have really shaped my ability to go and pursue what I do today morning when I was coming to set up and you know the devotion part so I had to wake up because we are recording and it's other still early morning but I had a French class and I had to wake up like at 4 30 5 a.m actually 5 a.m to come and set up so it's that devotion that I have had to put into the work that I do but I was as I was setting up I sat here and with my bonnets <laughs> and pajamas and I was thinking to myself what am I grateful uh, for today and I was just saying the fact that I get to live my dream because mm -hmm. this is part of my dream and I'm, it's, I'm realizing it day by day. Mm -hmm. I mean that not very many people get to do that mm -hmm. because they're afraid mm -hmm. to go after it and two, they don't have the right people around them to support them. Yes. And I think that's why it's very important to just provide this kind of information publicly to people yes. so that they know it's, it's okay to go after what you feel like your heart truly desires but obviously you put in the time to really think about it and whether it's the right thing for you whether it's the right thing for your being and what that means to the people around you because mm -hmm. um I, I think we were having this conversation that we're all dealt different cards in life yeah um so we've also got to consider that you can't have for example 10 children depending on you and you want to because you've watched this video you want to quit now Oh, I mean, yeah. what happens it has to be to the them. right side. The timing has to be right. Yeah, so you've yep. got to know what does that yep. mean for you while going to explore, but don't let that fear keep you in the same position. I think that's a clear message, yet you're meant for so much more and for greater, greater things. Yeah. Okay. And the support system, I think, is really important that, um, you know, you have to consult within, you have to speak to the right people, and again, I will reference the importance of mentors, the importance of coaches, um, the importance of self-learning, you you know, reading um, books, yeah. uh, listening to podcasts, because that gets you to the next point in life. If you are just going to wake up and decide, I don't want this, what's the reason why you do not want it? You, you know? must have a why. And where are you going to when you're saying, I do not want this? What is it that will, you think will serve you? So it just can't be. And then you have to also acknowledge the responsibilities you have around you and um, take your time to be able to understand what it is. Do your research. It's important to do your research. But do not be stuck. Either way, do not be stuck. And the moment you start to make progress towards wanting that change, you know, and knowing that you have the fear around you, then you still are making some progress. It might take time. It's never the same time for everyone. Some people take slightly more time than others. Others are really quick uh, decision makers. Um, but whatever it is, push yourself to get out of your comfort zone to be able to be, be better. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for coming today. I think I'd ask you for your parting shot, to give us parting shot, and my question would be, what is the one thing you've stepped into in the season of life you're in where you've had to welcome both fear and courage and do something that means I don't want to use the word good, that is meaningful to you as an individual. Um, 
for me it's really been the fact that I have always desired to start a business and you know as a graduate of entrepreneurship uh, being in the employment circle made me feel that there was something that was lacking I wanted to run my own business um, and so being able to start my business and getting off the ground with the right support has really been one thing that I have had to have the courage to do and still have the courage to do, but also have a lot of fears because it's different to have a salary on, an, uh, on a monthly basis and then move now towards wanting to really be self-employed and know that there are people who are depending on you to be paying them a salary at the same time to you know pay your bills take care of your children yeah. <laughs> you know um so that's that's the you know the thing that i would say that i am recently proud of to get that business off the ground and one of these fine days the business is going to be sponsoring authentic by magama Woohoo! authentic by magama not just her school fees <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> yes, so yes, we look forward to partnering and, um, you know, introducing our products to your viewers. I am sure they will like our product. Absolutely. And, um, yeah, they will get to know about it one of these fine days. Can I just say that I am so proud of you because I have known for years just how much you love the service and the products you're providing. Mm -hmm. for, I think since I was, like, very young girl and just seeing you thrive into that and get into it despite or in spite of the presence of fear yes is just wonderful and that gives me permission to walk into my dreams as well because mm -hmm. i'm like okay it doesn't look easy for sure but it's doable be encouraged see, yeah because i can see someone around me who is doing the same and still balancing the family the everything and i mean thank you for extending it to me by just being i learned that it's okay to try and show up and do it yep. to my level best yeah guys thank please, you wait do you have a question for me what is the fear <laughs> that you had to face and be courageous about it i think the fear that i really had was knowing when to exit um employment because mm -hmm. i Sook. Hey, Jesus Christy. <laughs> <laughs> the shrubbies. <laughs> oh, <I'm sorry. laughs> Ish, my school fees. Money <laughs> more English. <laughs> okay, because I went to look for a job. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I mean, I'm a Yali alumni, so founded an organization and went to look for a job because I knew that I had no experience running an organization. Mm -hmm. Then two years in, and I think after one year, that feeling of there's something you need to get out and get doing mm -hmm. get moving towards started coming back and six months in i was very internally i was very i wouldn't say unhappy because yeah. i'm grateful that i got that experience but i was out of place yeah and it took courage to tell myself that when this comes to an end let it go Mm -hmm. move to the next phase so the consulting um, I think even the people around me could tell and see but right now the most recent fear so that was one that has informed this one mm -hmm. I had to let go of that and release and but still recognize the value great value that you provided for me mm -hmm. but now the other fear that I am in in the presence of courage as well is being a founder uh -huh. with a startup organization and still an associate for someone else um so how how do i get things moving yes i'm still very young i don't have like 10 years of experience or something yeah but i'm willing to put in the work to see where can we move this um you have the courage in. yeah i have the courage mm -hmm. so i really look forward to seeing what becomes of it yeah because i do love good luck what i'm doing good luck we are here to support you thank you let me know what I can do to support you in that uh, journey. It's a good product, you know, being a founder, wanting to be impactful to people's lives, wanting to make the world a better place in every small way that you will contribute. 
I think is very good and the choice of wanting to work for some time and understand how organizations work and operate was also very good and I do believe that you were able to get what you needed for that time. Yeah. So knowing the right time to exit and if you're meant to be that person who just follows instructions, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, we can't it's all okay. be founders. We can't all be founders. We can't yeah. all be entrepreneurs, uh, you know. Who are we selling to? Who are we selling to? <laughs> Who's going to buy from us, yeah. you know. So we need to, to know who we are. Yeah. And I think, you know, my passion, for instance, came from my parents, my father, you know. So as we will be talking about my business, it's something that I saw again in my father. Um, and I know that, you know, we have family members who are also in a similar, sp similar space. So I do believe that that's something that has been transferred down to us um, mm -hmm. and the passion that we have uh, for the industry and uh, what we want to do for the industry and make a change um, is something that has been there for a long time, even though my work life has been slightly different, mm -hmm. but there is some point of connection yeah, in terms synergy. of fears, the synergy in terms of wanting to make um, life better for others yeah. and for ourselves and really live our purpose. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I don't think we were, as human beings, we're very dynamic and diverse. We were never meant to do one thing. Yes. Each season presents something we are meant to step into. And once that is done, then we yeah, move into the, the next, next one. one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Guys, do you have a question for us? Do you have a question for our mother? She and the Mama Wetu. Yes. Mama Wetu. I mean, Mama Wetu. I mean, uh, please like, subscribe, and share. Leave a comment down below and let us know what you'd want us to address next time or what you feel we have not fully addressed in this conversation that maybe to Meshikashita to Ibi. And you want us to go and dig, 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 dig deeper. Just let us know. <laughs> we'll be happy to share. Yeah. yeah. Please like, subscribe, and share. Like, subscribe, and share. Okay, thank you. And comment. Oh, and comment. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.